This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armies Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And in this episode, as Jonathan is also a bit of an alien franchise expert, he's taking a look at the iconic sci-fi weaponry of Aliens Fireteam Elite. Ah, all right, here we go. I'd like to introduce you to a close personal friend of mine. If there are any other games, guns, or mechanics that you guys want to see Jonathan break down, let us know in the comment section below. Make sure to subscribe for more videos like this one. And if you'd like to help out the Royal Armies Museum and continue to support Jonathan's work, check out the links in the description of this video. Right, over to Jonathan. We're not off to a great start, in my view, with the hand cannons. This Kramer 50. I think Kramer is possibly from one of the one of the comics. This is a Desert Eagle in space. Big chunky thing, firing 50 caliber rounds. I think the front end might even be based on the modern lightened Desert Eagle with the compensator ports cut into it. I don't really know what all the stuff going on at the front is meant to do. There's a weird looking kind of monopod strap thing that looks like it should fold down from the front of the gun that doesn't get used. But for me, the whole concept of a, a large caliber handgun for the Alien universe is a bit of an odd one. If you're gonna have pistols, they may as well be large caliber, so you're doing damage to what as far as we can tell, are some pretty tough uh, alien creatures, but I'm not sure why you'd bother with a handgun at all, really. Just carry more pulse rifle ammunition. <laughs> I guess the major drawback of relying on a pistol, if we're, if we're imagining combating these acid-blooded, deadly creatures, is that the amount of spray that you're going to experience fighting at close range with a large caliber pistol would be significant. It always struck me that once aliens become endemic to the galaxy, which is where it always goes with this franchise, you're not going to go into combat with essentially the same gear that you had in the original movie. You're going to invent some kind of new armor that's acid resistant, at least some sort of faceplate to protect you from the flying acid. In design terms, and trying to make this make sense, which is of course what we do <laughs> for fun, riffs on all the same stuff we saw in the movie makes very little sense with that amount of time elapsed, knowing you're gonna go up against these things. So not a fan of the pistols, really. So, the first uh, legacy weapon design, you might call it, except it's not really, because this whole game is, from my point of view, quite a successful visual reboot. The weapons you think you recognize <laughs> from the original movie and perhaps from other media are actually substantially different, and I've no real problem with that. Here we have the smart gun, but it's been so evolved that it's actually no longer an MG42 with some motorbike parts attached to it. The motorbike parts are still there. The swing arm from the suspension is, is there. The motorcycle grip and brake or clutch lever is still there. Even the sort of barrel casing of the 42 is sort of there, but every detail's been changed. I like the redesign. I didn't think I'd say that. It handles really well in terms of the auto tracking. I like the fact that it's somewhat capable hip fired using the stabilizing rig that we all know and love. We've got a slightly awkward reload for this thing. We're kind of reaching past ourselves to obtain the magazine and then back across to fit it. Imagining that these are real for a moment, that seems like a slightly awkward way to be reloading. I'd expect some system to take advantage of the stabilizing rig so you would lock it into position so that you can reach for it and attach with both hands, something like that. We don't see that in the movie, but this is meant to be further on in time. Overall, I'm a fan of it. This was a head scratcher for me. I fully expected to come across an Ithaca M37 as a homage to Hicks and his family heirloom. I'd like to keep this handy. What's weird is including a normal M37, calling it an A3, implying that it's somehow advanced, but actually it's just an M37. The only thing that makes it sci-fi is the Colonial Marines logo, sort of embossed on the side of the receiver. So you can trick this thing out to make it look more appropriate, different muzzle devices and stuff, different sights, but at the end of the day, it's still an early 20th century pump-action shotgun. 
doesn't make a lot of sense in this game, as is typical with video game shotguns. This thing's pretty devastating. The slight confusion for me there is the whole idea of Hicks' heirloom shotgun being effective is that he shoves it in the mouth of the, <laughs> the alien warrior that he kills with it. Take that. I kind of assumed these things were, were tough enough that you needed your 10mm armor-piercing explosive tip caseless to actually do damage to them. Maybe that's just me. Again, it's a weirdly old-fashioned gun for a game like this. Right, minor bone to pick here in that the whole point of the pulse rifle, or rather the assault rifle, which is all the pulse rifle is, is a futuristic assault rifle, was to make obsolete the submachine gun. And that is what we've seen. And we look at the design of this, and it really is just a pistol caliber pulse rifle. It's just, it seems like a redundant weapon class. As it was in things like Advanced Warfare, um, I'm not picking on this game in particular. Clearly inspired by the likes of the UMP. Something in common with the pulse rifle, the butt stock looks like it ought to fold or slide or both. I guess you pinch those buttons and slide it, but there isn't really room in there. I think we might have a little bit of style over substance in that. Another feature carried over from the pulse rifle is the infamous digital LED readout for ammunition. This reading is reading 48 on the side, but weirdly, and I guess it's because of the reference object that they used to, to model this thing, the actual magazine has conventional witness holes in the back of the mag, which I think say 24. So the magazine only goes up to 24. A little bit of a discrepancy there. And I suppose we have to question the original design concept of why on earth you have a counter on the side of the gun. Of course, we know the answer. It's for the audience so they can see the drama of the rounds counting down. So in a game, it doesn't actually serve that purpose really at all. High speed incoming. Get hot. Don't lock up. Way more than I expected. I'd like to introduce you to a close personal friend of mine, or at least something that's normally on display in the museum. This is a screen used prop, as close as a real pulse rifle as you're going to get. In reality, um, and as represented by the pile of guns behind me, this was a welded together combination of a Thompson, a Remington 870, chopped right down, and concealed within a SPAS 12 heat shield and cut down pump grip. Now this one, this is one of, um, I think, seven in the movie Aliens. Um, they were all but two taken apart and then several put back together for the filming of Alien 3. So this is not in its original Aliens configuration. It's as it would have finished a um, hard life of production in both that film and Alien 3, which is why it has this plastic, this vacuum formed casing that disguises all those different bits. This one was not a grenade launcher capable version, which is just as well for my arm muscles because um, the dual units, as, as they're sometimes called, were extremely heavy, far heavier than you'd expect some futuristic assault rifle grenade launcher combination to ever be. The whole point of all this was to be able to produce muzzle flash, to get the actors engaged and, and reacting to, to shooting. Wouldn't have been essential for a sci-fi movie, but James Cameron, uh, as well as being a bit of a gun geek like me, he wanted something that looked and felt real. It was a bit like the Blade Runner thing of having a blaster, not a laser gun. Uh, so originally it was meant to be an MP5, and actually looking at this fireteam version of a pulse rifle, I do see shades of the original James Cameron concept art. I'd be very surprised if that wasn't partly deliberate. I've got to say, I do like this visual reboot. If you're going to change things up, as virtually all of the games have in one way or another, you may as well go back to the, the concept and come up with your own version, especially if you're setting it in the future of that universe. Universe. I don't quite know how the stock is supposed to function. They never use the stocks in the movie, they never extend them, they never use the sights either. Now there were no sights, there was just the groove. For a modern game, we need some sort of upgradable system. So the optics they've designed for the game are at least original designs. They're not just ACOGs and EOTechs, as we've seen in some games, where they just slap them on, regardless of the era or context. But they're this, a similar size, shape, an apparent technology level. We're talking 200 years in the future, guys. I'd expect to see literally just a clear block and the reticle should just appear in front of you. Or, if you remember the original movie, they actually had eyepieces that would flip down. The iron sights are 
actually depicted. You can see them. Why we'd have iron sights 200 years in the future is an open question. The glaring elephant in the room is the complete lack of a grenade launcher. They've removed it entirely from this absolutely classic um, bit of sci-fi history here. I'm a little bit heartbroken about it. <laughs> so that's really my only bugbear with this. I'm perfectly happy with what they've done to make it an A2. They've kept a version of like the Thompson cocking handle, that's fine. This version of the weapon has the counter on it, which is nice. Capped off at 60 rounds. I'm guessing because they didn't want to tread on the toes of the smart gun. Now a big aspect of this that they absolutely have nailed is are the sound effects. that rising, falling tone, unique to that weapon. Might not make any technical sense, <laughs> but it just sounds incredibly cool and it instantly links you back to the movie. So the actual gameplay with the pulse rifle is great, till the moment you realize you haven't got any grenades. Only hand grenades. Watch the sides. We're looking here at the burst rifle. The several variants or derivatives of the pulse rifle are a little curious. Of course, we already have rifles capable of semi-automatic, three round burst and automatic fire. We, we've had those for decades. So why you would need three completely distinct weapons other than purely for variety in the game. For me, there's too much variety, so it might sound silly. Literally, the pulse rifle would do the job of all three, the burst rifle, the semi-auto rifle, and itself. <laughs> and that of the submachine gun. But then you would, you, you know, you'd have to do, basically make a different game. So here's the other major variant, or derivative maybe, in this case, of the Pulse Rifle. It's substantially different, it's got a lengthened receiver, it's meant to be perhaps a higher calibre. The barrel barrel shroud is huge, which I guess kind of implies the higher calibre that I think this is. Unlike a lot of the other weapons in the game, I do think this fills a gap. Semi-automatic, powerful, scope that isn't really functional, because it's third person, but it improves the inherent accuracy of of the weapon. So yeah, I, I like this better than the burst rifle. This actually does look like a DMR that could live in the Aliens universe. Huh. Huh. Right, this is one I'm not familiar with. It looks the part, it looks like a futuristic shotgun, which is clearly what it is, until you see it in use, and it's literally a break-open double-barreled shotgun. I'm not sure about it fitting from, from an alien's perspective. Apparently made by the Hyperdyne Company, which is a James Cameron reference to his own Cyberdyne Company from Terminator, and in-universe they made the synthetics. So apparently they also make weapons. Perfectly happy with the look of the thing, it's something different to the standard Colonial Marine stuff. It does make it extra pointless having an Ithaca in the game, I must admit. And the whole idea of future technology relying on a break-open shotgun is just a little bit silly. Right, so they had to have a flamethrower or an incinerator unit, of course they did, it's a absolutely iconic to not only aliens but alien. They chose not to replicate the weird looking thing with an M16 carry handle on it from the original movie with the vertical fuel tank. They went their own route and I think I approve of that. They've made it effectively a heavy weapon, something that the demolisher, the smart gunner uses and it mounts to the same rig. So that kind of makes sense. The only bit that doesn't make sense is that the fuel tank is about the same size. So they're not taking advantage of the sort of load bearing ability of that harness. We've talked a bit about flamethrowers before on, on the series. I think this one's fine. There's a residual burn going on from the fuel. Of course, that causes you an immediate problem of you're not just getting attacked by an alien, you're getting attacked by an alien on fire. I might have expected it to be a bit more capable than it is as a heavy weapon. I think the smart gun is a lot more effective. Little detail there written on the side, read manual before operating. Might seem like a joke, 
It's not. Modern firearms uh, in the States are legally required to have that mark somewhere on them, or at least in the kit that you receive. So you'll, you'll see that on a lot of, uh, lots of weapons. Okay, this is interesting. I buy this as part of the universe. Uh, maybe more the Dark Horse comics universe than the movies. Sort of a bullpup, riot shotgun, rapid fire, compact, close quarters, perfectly fine bit of weapon variety. Uh, no buttstock though, which is curious. You know, something with that, that amount of recoil, why wouldn't you have a buttstock on it? In fact, I might argue that that should have been a bigger, heavier weapon mounted to the smart gun rig, but that's not my, uh, not my place to say, really. Now this one I think is a, is well worth the addition. There are various rocket type weapons in the Alien universe, the wider universe, never shown in the movies. And the idea of a min effectively miniaturized man portable rocket launcher thing makes a lot of sense. The fact that they've integrated it into the whole smart gun rig also makes sense. Although recoil with a weapon like that isn't in theory not a problem. It's the backblast you want to worry about. This is some kind of a sci-fi system that we don't understand firing sort of miniature rockets using some kind of operating system that hasn't been invented yet. So I give it a free pass on that. Looks suitably chunky and industrial, and you've got to have that ranged firepower for no doubt. I haven't got there yet, but later in the game. This is a bit of a weird one. I can't help feeling that the word flechette here is being used for coolness factor. Hardly the first time in sci-fi that uh, a bit of techno babble has been used without consideration for what it means. The way the thing is firing, the, the sort of pseudo tracer effect, what we can see of it operating. I'm not seeing what's flechette about it. For those of you who don't know, a flechette is a little steel or tungsten dart. And the idea is it travels at very high velocity, flat trajectory, very accurate, basically a failed attempt at a future weapon from what well, was attempted in the 50s and 60s, again in the 80s. It's deader than corduroy at this point. Whereas the caseless system that the other weapons are supposed to use hasn't entirely gone away, could still come back, remains to be seen. But flechettes, not happening. And doesn't really add any value here. It's really just a submachine gun. We've also got those weird witness holes on the magazine. They go all the way to the bottom and there's no space there for any kind of spring to be pushing rounds up. Maybe they've come up with some new way of feeding from magazines. Don't know. X-43 implies this is some sort of experimental weapon. I'm not seeing it being super extra effective. So I was looking for a submachine gun from this game to justify its existence. So a bullet firing submachine gun. Why bother? You've got a pulse rifle. A flechette firing one? Thought that might add some value. Not really seeing it from this clip. Right, thanks guys for watching the weapons of Aliens Fireteam Elite. I've been cautiously awaiting this one and have been enjoying it, but as you see, I've, as always, I've got some views. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. We do this regularly um, over at the Royal Armouries channel. We've also got um, our own firearms related and other arms and armor content as well. Links in the description as always for donations if you if you feel moved to do so. And importantly, we have a whole mini documentary on this wonderful object in the GameSpot playlist, the Loadout series. So do go and check that out because you get, you get more detail from me and Dave about this bit of sci-fi history.